Hi YouTube, so this is my second video. Um, so I've had the camera for a few weeks now, two or three weeks, and just wanted to make another video to give you the review, so to speak. Now, first of all, I have to say I'm very, very impressed with the camera, and I'm very pleased. Um, now there are a few issues that I've come across, issues that can be solved, but um, issues that I would also consider to be typical Leica. Um, so yeah, <laughs> just to start off, um, the main aspects that I'm impressed with are the built-in light meter and the shutter speed dial. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, quick to use, if there's a moment that you want to capture, you focus, adjust the shutter speed, and bang. Um, it all, go, all goes very quickly, it's all very practical and easy to use. However, um, I have to say that there are a few small issues that I came across. And when I say typical Leica, um, I mean that with pretty much every Leica camera that I've owned, which is three, it's not that many, but still, they were each of a different generation. I had the Leica 3, the Leica R4, and now the Leica M. Each one had its own sort of quirks and small issues that you need to get used to. Um, because a lot of people may assume that a Leica being a Leica is going to be extremely user-friendly and practical and everything's going to be entirely obvious, um, which isn't the case, I'm afraid. But I think that's part of the Leica experience. You have to figure things out for yourself and make the camera work for you. Um, I think that is definitely part of the experience and this camera is no exception. It's a fantastic camera, but there are a few things that um, you will need to get used to. Your first couple of reels of film are going to be dreadful. Um, and then you will figure out how to use it and things will improve. So as I said, I'm very happy with the light meter and the shutter speed dial. The lens is also fantastic. The clarity is wonderful. Um, it's a wide angle lens. Yeah. Great. So, the issues that I've had, there are a few minor issues. Um, so the first one, and it's really a minor issue, is the strap. And this being a very early model, it is only a two lug model, so you only have the strap on the side here. Now what you tend to find is when you bring the camera up to your face, you also have the strap in your face which can distract you. However, I have to say, it's um, something you get used to very quickly. Um, and it's not a deal breaker. It's just one of those things you get used to. Um, I barely notice it anymore. In the beginning, you will notice it more. But yeah, that's a minor issue. Now, the second major issue that I had with the camera um, is that the it doesn't have any frame lines for the 28mm lens. So when looking through the viewfinder, you're not that's not what you're going to get. <laughs> it, the, the frame lines do not adjust to the 28mm lens. So again, it's something you will need to get used to if you're buying the 28mm. I believe the M5 um, has frame lines for the 50 and the 90 and one more. I can't remember, but it doesn't do the Elmerick 28. Again, not a deal breaker. It, you don't really notice it. Um, I've been told that it's you can more or less rely on the 90 millimeter frame lines, although you can get an adapter from lights, um, which I may do in the future, uh, once I have saved enough money for that kind of thing. But for now, yeah my advice is to take a picture, get it developed, see where the frame lines fall, and then adjust your photography um, accordingly. 
when taking pictures. Not a huge issue. Now the third thing that um, more or less ruined the first two reels of film uh, revolves around the light meter. Now the meter itself is fantastic, there's no problems with it. Um, as many, many of you will know, the Leica M5 was the first M to have through the lens metering. So when you cock the shutter, you'll get the meter pop up behind the lens. And um, it's about six millimeters across, so like this. And sometimes you can see it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it's like a gray colored lens just behind, um, just behind the lens, sorry. Like a gray colored element just there which disappears obviously when you uh, press the shutter. So let's just do that again. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but um, that's basically the light meter popping up. It's a pretty interesting system. But the meter itself is fine. Now the problem is that uh, this meter requires a battery and the batteries for the M5 don't actually exist anymore because they contain mercury, which is obviously toxic and yeah, the original batteries, you can't get them. So um, a lot of people will rely on an adapter, which takes a standard, I can't remember which one, but a normal lithium ion battery and converts it to the larger format um, of the original mercury battery, um, which is fine. Uh, I've opted for a different path, which is to use this. And it's basically a modern version of the original battery, non-toxic. And yeah, I didn't even, I didn't really know these were available still, but apparently they are. And it's a good shop near, near me that sells these. So they're not terribly expensive. They last about a year. And yeah. Now the problem with that is that because this is a new battery, a modern battery, you're putting more voltage, higher voltage through the light meter, which results in the metering being too high. So all of my photos are underexposed, uh, which is annoying, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is what happens when you rely on the meter with the new battery. There's that. This one I metered uh, by eye. So I didn't, this was before I put the battery in the camera and you can see it's fine. The clarity is very good. Um, yeah, it's not my greatest photo, but you can actually see something. And here we have the same situation in color. Again, not enough light going into the meter. And this is the case with 80% of my first pictures from the from my first reel, um, unfortunately. But again, as why I said, this whole thing is a learning curve. Um, I've certainly learned from it. This one was okay. Um, slightly too dark, but it's okay. Um, I don't know if you can make it out on the camera here, but um, it is very clear. The clarity is very, very good. So in that sense, I'm very impressed. So I took the camera to Leica and they said the solution is very simple. You just flick the switch down one more than you would through what the meter says. So if the meter says a thousand, you switch it down to 500 and that should correct the fault basically. So yeah, I'm gonna carry on pushing, gonna carry on trying, um, just improving my technique. It does take getting used to. Um, there are obviously a few other issues with the M5, like um, there being next to no replacement parts. So if the meter it gets damaged in any way, there's no way of replacing it, unfortunately. So if you are planning on buying one, please do get a good one and please be very careful with it, especially when fitting lenses that may not be perfectly suited to the M5. This is fine, but I would not suggest a collapsible lens for the M5. Um, and if you do, then you have to be very careful because every time you cock the shutter here, um, that meter is going to pop up behind the lens 
And if you then collapse the lens in, you're going to damage the meter. So another thing with the M5 is if you do cock it, do not store it cocked. Never. Because it can damage the curtain. So always store the camera uncocked. What else can I tell you? Obviously the Vulcanite, yeah, that's another issue. Leica will replace it, but it's not going to be cheap. Um, you're also going to struggle to find um, leather casings for it from original leather casings. Um, and there's another word of caution. If you do decide to get a leather case from an original M5, an original leather case, um, make sure that it hasn't been stored in damp conditions because a lot of them are moldy, which can damage the lens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save up for a few months and get a custom case made from leather just to be on the safe side. Um, and again, with straps, Leica will do straps for you. Um, obviously, I have a Canon strap on here. Yeah. But again, they're not really, um, this is a pretty unique strap for a Leica. Um, a strap fitting, I mean. it. It's not really typical. So, yeah. Um, I hope I've covered everything. Again, I'm very impressed with the camera and... I won't be selling it anytime soon. I'm going to carry on using it. It's been great to use. It's, um, it is an M camera. It feels like an M camera. You can... Yeah. It gives you the confidence to improve your street photography. I'm still a little bit uh, shy when approaching people or photographing people. But... Um, yeah. I'm... Definitely pleased for now. So yeah, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, I would welcome them. Thank you.